today I am going to talk about the three big myths that you probably believe about starting an enamel pin business. There's lots of information floating around, there's lots of people talking about pins right now, and I'm breaking down the three things that are completely untrue and should stop holding you back. Okay, let's get started. Number one. The enamel pin world is too saturated. There's no way I could possibly stand out. Incorrect. <laughs> Pins are just a medium for your art, just like prints and stickers. So would you ever say to yourself, oh, you know, I'm not gonna make any prints because it's just too saturated out there for art prints. There's no way I could stand out. No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> no one says that. So if you, if you pigeonhole yourself into thinking that you are only an enamel pin maker, then that can be overwhelming and then you can hit that roadblock that it's too saturated, there are too many pins. But if you change your mindset and start thinking about yourself as an artist who offers enamel pins, you're focusing more on your art than you are on the medium. So your followers are going to love your work no matter what you put it on, whether it's pins, prints, stickers, t-shirts, whatever. So if you open yourself up and think of yourself as an artist first and use pins as another medium to share that art, your followers will be into it and you won't hit that roadblock anymore. Myth number two, people just aren't that into pins anymore, so I just shouldn't even bother. False. <laughs> if you watched my other video, the five reasons why you should start making enamel pins, I'll link it down below. I already researched this a little bit and I looked up on YouTube to see how many searches had happened <laughs> for enamel pins, just enamel pins, and there were 1.25 million searches for enamel pins on YouTube that previous month. That's insane. People are still talking about pins, they're sharing their pins, they're collecting their pins, they're making pins, they're everywhere, and it's awesome. <laughs> and the cool thing in response to that last video where I was kind of talking about this a little bit more, I got a comment from someone named Bella, and her comment was amazing. She allowed me to share it, so I really appreciate that. But she said, and it's so well said, and I think it really drives home this point that I'm making, um, she said, I have just started collecting in the last two to three months and I can attest to the fact that some people are just starting to climb on the pin hype now. My greatest joy lately is finding more pin makers on Instagram whose art I really like. So as a newbie, I see how new pin makers can definitely find a space to grow because new pin lovers are seeking out pin art and pin styles now. How awesome is that? And she's completely right. There are new collectors every day. There are new makers every day. This is a growing and emerging field and it's just becoming part of the kind of indie artist lexicon and I think it's amazing. Okay, number three is a big one. Number three is that it's too expensive to get into pins. So ordering your pins is too expensive of an endeavor. So. Let me share this with you. Even if you're using a middle person who tends to be more expensive because you have to pay them for their time because they are the go-between, they're handling all the logistics and all of that stuff, you can get a one inch soft enamel pin for about 200 bucks. So that's 100 pins for 200 bucks. In that 100 pins, you could change the colors so you technically will have two different pins. You could change the finishes, have two different finishes. So you can have different variations, so you can break it down a little bit more and encourage more sales that way. But for 200 bucks, um, not including shipping, shipping is nominal really for a middle person, but if you save up from a craft show or from your Etsy sales for a few months, then you can fund your first pin. And then when you sell those pins, put that money right back in and fund more. That's exactly what I did. I took my sales from freelance design work that I was doing and I said, I'm gonna get one pin. And I ordered my enamel, my soft enamel alien pin and Jess helped me with it. And it was about 200 bucks, maybe 250. Um, it had to be less than 250. And from that, I sold that, and then I ended up getting the, I think it was the catacorn pin and the pizza cap. 
then so I was able to fund two more pants and then the next go round I was able to fund more so you can funnel that money back in so if you can save up just around 200 250 bucks then you can get into enamel pins and then use it as a snowball effect to get even more it's a bit of a chunk when you're starting out but if you save up and take the time or do pre-sales on your website or do a Kickstarter. I'm not a huge fan of Kickstarter. I'm more of a pre-sale person um, or saving up bootstrapping person. So if I could do it when I was making minimal cash with my freelance work and then funneled that in, um, then you can do it too. Okay, so those are the three myths that I think you should stop believing <laughs> about the world of enamel pins. If you have any questions or if you have anything that's kind of that you're struggling with, let me know in the comments and I will try to help you out. I've also got a freebie for my kind of checklist to starting an enamel pin business. So you can check that out too. And I'll have more information about enamel pins 101, my official course coming out soon as well. So be sure to give this a like and a subscribe if you love enamel pins and talking about enamel pins, and making enamel pins and collecting enamel pins and all of that good stuff. So I will see you in the next video. Bye!